Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Inform Coaches webinar. Very excited to have with us today a couple special guest speakers, Del Scott and Rebecca Trevino. They're going to join us here in just a few minutes and in our presentation, but I'm very, very grateful for each of you joining us on today's call and webinar training. Very thankful for your time. We know that uh, there are many things you could be doing right now, but we appreciate you investing in yourself and in your growth of your Nature Sunshine business. As you know, today's webinar, Glandular System Products to Accelerate Your Participants' Results, is the title of today's webinar. Very grateful for um, the efforts that many people have put in, into this presentation. I want to remind you that if you have questions or comments, please feel free to put those in, um, just write them down and we'll try to answer them as we go. And it, throughout the presentation, we'll have a couple times when we can uh, try to answer those uh, questions for you. So one of the things that you will might remember is that in the training participants manual and in the, in the information that we're going to be covering today, is found in module 10 glandular health and hormones and as coaches um, you probably often find as you're working with people that there's plateaus um, you've witnessed this either in your your own participation or maybe you've you've experienced it through another participant in the program um, and these plateaus we are going to review how to overcome these plateaus and really why it's so important for you to monitor your client's success and behaviors make that connection and we'll also cover how you can overcome a different kind of plateau as well as we tie in our, our GoPro discussion here in a few minutes as well so the the GoPro discussion that we're gonna have to take uh, take on today is the fortune is in the follow-up and Rebecca is going to give us a lot more information about that in just a minute but that follow-up that we're going to talk about will really help you overcome the plateaus that you might see in your business one example of that might be your sales, right? You can imagine that if, if your sales have tapered off or are flattening out, then you need to get back to your follow-up. So there are many business plateaus that can be worked through, just like with the product program plateaus that you're going to be learning more about. Um, we're going to be discussing how follow-up can help you overcome your business plateaus and maybe even prevent them as you put those best practices in place. And as I mentioned, so in a minute, we'll hear from Rebecca on this. But kind of to tie it all together, to set the foundation for for this discussion, is this, uh, you've probably seen this before, team. Together, everyone achieves more. Team. So if, as we talk about the glandular system, one thing we know that the glandular system, all, you know, is dependent on other glands within that system. There's communication that takes place. There's lots of different um, biofeedback type information that's going on and each of those glands has their responsibility but each of them also have a role to play as part of a team and when they're functioning and working properly things happen just like that when you are working properly with your team members when you're helping them follow up when you're helping them achieve their program results through our products and helping them stay on their goals everyone achieves more so together everyone ach achieves more if that's one thing you take home from today Remember that, that together everyone achieves more team. And speaking of which, I'd like to introduce one of our fantastic team leaders, team man, mem members and managers out there, of course. I'm talking about Dell Scott. Dell is a national manager, CNHP, master herbalist. She's served on the board of directors of Sunshine Health Freedom Foundation for many years. She's a nature sunshine herb specialist. And as we talk about the herbs um, today and putting that together, um, to help accelerate our participant success, and that's really what we're trying to do is achieve success for our participants. Dell is going to give us some great insights, some information that she's learned as she's worked with many, many different people. So what I'd like to do, Dell, is go ahead and turn the time over to you and, and let you share some of your thoughts. We talked earlier in the week and uh, about this presentation and things that we wanted to share, and one of the things that stood out was was how important it is for you to follow up with your participants and the clients, the people you're working with, to make sure that they're 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 staying program compliant, but also that they're getting the results that they should be expecting. Um, maybe you can share with us your thoughts 
on why why adding products sometimes is necessary to somebody's program and why that follow-up is so critical. So I'll turn the time over to you, Dell, and, and let you share some of your thoughts and we'll review those products in module 10 and then we'll we'll see if there's any questions. So Dell, with that, I'll turn the time over to you. Okay, thank you so much. It's my pleasure to be here. Uh, one of the exciting things is with the INFORM program and what I've seen is it works and it always works. And if it's not working, there's a reason. So you want to follow up with the people once they begin because they've come into the program with excitement. They're ex they have expectation, they have excitement. And what I try my best to teach, people should see something within five days, some encouragement. And so when they do, and we want to keep them, even though it's a 13 week program, we want to keep people enthused and excitement, excited. And I'll mention that there will be times of plateaus. You know, we have, um, we have social events, we have family events, we have times that we might get off of the program, but that you as an informed coach, uh, if you know and you can head off these things and let them know ahead of time that these things may happen. So the program is working and um, that's one thing. The other thing is five days. They need to feel something and see something within five days. How are you going to know that if you don't follow up? So when you follow up, you'll have questions that you may ask and some things, and we'll talk about that in just a minute, but uh, we're talking about the glandular system. So what I want to mention, we've heard hormones all of our lives, but did we recognize that hormones really are just messengers? And I would encourage all of the informed coaches, you don't have to wait till week 10 to take a look at the module for week 10, because if a person is not Maybe they've been on the program for three weeks. They they were doing well, and all of a sudden, you know, they're not doing as well as they had expected or hoped. Uh, it's really good. You're the leader. It's really good timing for you just to go ahead and know the information that's in uh, chapter ten of the things that you might be able to ask them. So there's always a reason. So let's just say if they're not getting the results, some of the questions you might have, you, you know, are you doing two shakes a day? A lot of people will start, and you've probably all seen this, and they're going to start with one shake a day, and they, in a few days, they start getting results. They stay on one shake a day. Maybe four weeks later, they're saying it's not working as I wanted it to. So you as the coach, you can just bring them back to what excited them in the first place and make sure that they understand, am I doing the product, uh, the program? And uh, one thing I'm going to mention and before we start talking about the hormones because <clears throat> or the glandular products, it might be that just bringing in two shakes will be the success they were looking at because this program has been scientifically studied, clinical proven, and so the people that are getting results, those are the people you want to talk to. So I would encourage us as informed coaches, my question to every one of us, including me, am I doing it? You know, if you are not doing what you're expecting your group to do, then you're going to get discouraged. They're discouraged. You've got to set the standard. And so are you doing the program with two shakes? So, and the I mean, reason I'm saying this, and I'll tell you a little bit about it, but we have uh, an accountability time in our weekly meetings and we didn't start it at the first one, but long about the fifth or sixth, now they're becoming friends. They're, they rely on each other and support each other. So I started asking them, what do they want us, the rest of the group, to hold them accountable for this week? And I went around the room and I wrote down those things. And, um, and one of the men said, I want to be held accountable to do two shakes this, 
this time and he'd lost like 15 pounds so far, but he'd been doing one shake and he said, I want to increase my exercise. And uh, probably the week before, and I'll mention this in a minute, but he had brought in the thyroid support and the adrenal support, and we'll see why. But uh, the following week, when we went back around and I said, did you meet your accountability that you asked us to hold you to? Different ones, some said, no, maybe I did five days. He said, yes, I did every day, and I lost 6.6 .6 pounds this week. So that is encouraging, but it's also encouraging the group. So um, people, you know, are, have a busy lifestyle. That means their adrenals are being tapped. And we've got to support, uh, support what we need. So getting into the thyroid and the adrenal glands, those are two big, big parts of this. These are game changers, you guys. So here with the slides, let's see what the thyroid really does. It's responsible for controlling your metabolism and many of your vital functions. So I have a question for you. Do you take your temperature and do you encourage everyone to, first thing in the morning before they get out of bed, it needs to be 97.8 or above. A lot of people are going to tell you, oh, mine's never that high. My normal is 97. So they've just answered their own question. Are they a candidate for bringing in the thyroid support? Most definitely. And on this slide, you see that using iodine, by iodine foods, then our thyroid creates two hormones, T3 and also T4. Do you know that in Japan, in the daily diet, people get about 2,400 uh, micrograms of iodine. In the United States, on an average, we get about 154. So you see, we have room to bring in the proper foods to build the iodine, but the thyroid support formula with the get being the game changer, it's going to help uh, circumvent some of the issues that you may see. For instance, let's say um, weight loss, irritability, maybe trembling, shakiness, hair loss. Uh, women may have irregular or light periods. This is all in your workbook. And so you keep in mind, if you want to ask them about that, you're following up with them. So you're going to know week to week what is are they moving forward in success or do they feel like there's a sabotager? So the thyroid support nourishes that thyroid gland and it enhances the actions of thyroid hormones. And it's going to help a healthy metabolism. You know, and a lot of people don't even know what metabolism is, but the metabolism is the process that occurs whether I'm walking, whether I'm sleeping, whether I'm sitting. So I need my thyroid to be functioning. It's my emotional gland. So emotionally, if I'm not encouraged about what I'm doing, it's your, it is your gift to the people that you can say, okay, we're going to take a look at thyroid support. And now then, let's just go ahead and move the slide, Brian, and let's see um, the seven keto. Now, the seven keto, what it does, it's great for plateaus. Make sure you're feeding the thyroid. And then if you need to bring in seven keto for a plateau, that is great. We had one lady that uh, she took seven keto and in one bottle, she shed, we don't like to say lost, but she shed eight pounds because she was at a plateau she needed to stimulate the thyroid production. And what happens in the brain, there is a set point. And if you've weighed 180 pounds for three years, that set point has already set to, to feel like you need to weigh that. The seven keto jump starts that and it opens that part of the brain where it lets you reduce that weight, whatever the number was. So 
The seven keto is a great help because it also helps you to uh, the conversion of your T3s at your T4 to T3. So you don't, you are the expert. You don't have to have all the doctor words. You just have to know that you have this in your toolkit. And so you don't have to wait till week 10. If someone says they have a plateau, what I have found always, it is either glands or it's cleansing. And so I always, I ask them certain questions about, you know, we, we talk a lot about poop around here, you know, make sure you're, you're pooping two or three times a day with form. And we get kind of a, a laugh about that. Um, and we had a visitor and she said, I never heard of people talking about poop like you guys do. We call it the washroom. So anyway, those are questions that after they have the laugh, then they're on the team. But I also want to share with you. So we're talking thyroid, but guess what? You have a backup and we'll just move forward in the slide. The adrenal glands are very important. Your thyroid gland is the number one backup to your heart. It regulates your heart rhythm. Guess what? Your adrenal glands back up the thyroid. So the adrenal support nourishes those adrenal glands. They support the body's ability to regulate stress. So let me ask you, which one of us do not need those things? Every one of us do. So I would encourage you over and over again to go ahead and get the feel for chapter 10. Read it. Then you're going to know because you might have five people sitting there and one might say, you know, I'm stuck. And if it's on chapter two, you may not know that you have everything you need already in the manual. And one thing I want to say, make sure you have fun. And so, you know, we have essential oils. So uh, what we've done is you might make this and give it away as a, a prize or something. But uh, the gr a great oil, essential oil for the thyroid would be myrrh. Frankincense, myrrh, and lemongrass. And we just put 10 drops of... Uh, and break it down, frankincense, myrrh, and lemongrass, and people will rub that over their thyroid. They might use one drop of myrrh and the carrier oil and just put a drop on the thyroid every day. And it helps to reduce inflammation and it kind of just is a great jump start. So, uh, Brian, did you have anything else that you want me to talk about? Well, thank you, Dell. Um, great little overview on, on the glandular system and its impact on our ability to get program results and, and some of the things that we can do to accelerate our participant success. You mentioned asking questions. Um, a lot of times when people, you know, when you follow up and you have a question, you say, uh, you know, how, what, what, what experiences are you having with the product? Or there might be certain ways to phrase questions, but, but generally it's the responses people give. You mentioned the adrenal glands um, and how sometimes the effect of stress on them. And, and again, there's information in Chapter 10, but if somebody comes back and they say, well, I just have muscle, you know, my muscles are cramping, or I don't, I don't, I feel weak, you know, I feel just, my stomach is upset or my heart. I mean, some of these things are effects of adrenal, uh, adrenal, adrenal fatigue. And so mm -hmm. um, there's information here, but could maybe you could give us just a couple examples of a question or two that you might ask um, in your follow-up process before we jump to our discussion on follow-up. Sure. How do you follow up? I would okay. be happy to. You know, um, I have some little notes that I put in my manual. And one of the examples of needing glandular help would be maybe low blood pressure, uh, low blood sugar. This would be adrenals and even thyroid, high blood pressure. But if they crave salty things, are they craving sweets? And then you can just look at them. And if they have dark circles under their eyes, the body is already saying, I need some adrenal help. But just little things like, you know, do you feel very accurate on your thinking or do you have men mental fogginess and people know uh, fluid retention who would guess that constipation and fluid retention comes back to the glandular system 
And also, if it's a person that feels like they can't do without caffeine of a morning, then that's another signal. So uh, when they, and I'll tell you another thing, if you have one person in your group that's trying this, when they come back the next week, their testimony is people are going to listen more to them than they do to you. And that's great because now they've all become a part of it. And um, tiredness, moodiness, those are all glandular uh, signals that we need to support the glandular system. So if we want to accelerate our participant success, we need to first listen, right? Listen to their responses to some of the questions we're asking and or the things they're telling us about their program experience. And then um, I, one other word you used was accountability, which I loved. Um, let's help everybody stay accountable to their to their goals and make sure that we follow up with them. And and when we are adding glandular system products, just realize even though it's in module 10, you don't have to wait till module 10 to add, add them or look at, at, at it, adding them to a product program because people sometimes need that extra support, right? It's all about support when it comes to the glandular system and uh, making sure that they're communicating properly. So, so great little just reminder as coaches, Dell, thank you. That's why you're such a great leader and, a, and great success with this program because you know the skills and you've taught us our skills and you've given us some great insight to the glandular system. So thank you very much. Um, one question that did come in, Dell, was uh, when you're suggesting that they take the second shake, and you know maybe somebody started off with one shake, is there a better time or best time to take that second shake for for greater success? Well, uh, what's really nice about the program, I always ask, what do you do at 10 and 2? So we need a protein snack. Some people will even, I have a lot of people that do two meal replacements a day. But if they're going to go out to eat with a family member or something, they'll do a half of a shake before they leave even though that's two and a half, because we've got to understand that getting that protein in the brain allows the leptin that says, I'm satisfied, I'm happy, and it stays strong. But sugar, stress, the lack of protein causes cortisol to rise, and immediately, I'm not happy, I am hungry. So first thing in the morning, definitely. And then the other two times, uh, people have worked it out make sure that we're doing three protein meals and a, and a meal replacement shake is a meal, three me protein meals and two protein shakes. So, uh, I mean, uh, snacks. So a lot of people will do a protein snack at 10 and two, and they'll do a breakfast shake and dinner shake, and then they'll have a salad or something at lunch. I think you can work it out pretty well into your schedule. Yeah, great, great insights there. All right, well, um, we'll continue on, and and Dell, if you don't, if you have the time and can hang on, great. We might have some additional questions as we go through some information here. But I just again want to thank each of you on the call, and thank you, Dell, for taking the time to put together those thoughts and to be with us on this call. So thank you My so pleasure. much, Dell. You, you know, we talk about communication, we talk about teamwork, and uh, one of the great things about Nature Sunshine is we always have willing and helpful managers to share their insights and we also have a great staff here at home office and one of uh, those individuals rebecca trevina trevino sorry director of distributor training and development uh, she is going to share with us now some great information she's part of our fantastic team here at home office and she's worked diligently in so many areas you're going to see more and more from her as time goes on but uh, one of the things i'm very excited to do is, is let you take over now, Rebecca, and, and share your thoughts on follow-up and our GoPro skills, kind of our book club, if you will. Um, that's what we uh, we call it here at Home Office is our book club on the GoPro skills. But uh, this, this month's call, we're going to talk a little bit about these things. And what I might just encourage everybody to do is think of ways that you can tie the information that Re Rebecca is going to share with us to what Dell has just shared with us and adding the glandular products to our participants program. So with that, Rebecca, if you're there, I'll turn the, the mouse and the time over to you. So thank you, Rebecca. Okay. Thanks so much, Brian. And Dale, thank you. I always learn so much from you every time. I think I'm going to go ahead and put some adrenal support on my own order. <laughs> thank you, Rebecca. 
All right, let's see. Brian, have you passed me the mouse? I think so. Maybe dub double click. Let's see if I did it right. <laughs> there you go. Looks like something's happening. All right, there we go. Come on. Why is it not doing anything? There you go. Whoops. There we go. Whoops. A little okay. bit lag. Back up a little bit. Got a little lag there. Okay. There we go. All right. So if you've been following along with us the past few months, we have been covering the GoPro uh, from Eric Worry. Got the website up there on the screen. If you haven't already ordered a book for yourself, go ahead and do it. He doesn't charge for the book. He charges about $7 for shipping. You will want to have this book if you don't already have a copy. I know I've enjoyed reading it so much and getting a lot out of it. So last month we talked about presenting your product or opportunity and this month we're talking about following up with prospects. So you've heard in network marketing that the saying is true, the fortune is in the follow-up. If you want to become a network marketing professional, follow-up is a requirement. But let's look at a few concepts of what does follow-up really mean. So, you know, if you say you're going to call at a specific time, then you do it. The network marketing profession is full of people who get all excited one minute and then they're missing an action the next. Run your business through a calendar of your choice. Maybe you like to use a physical calendar or you like to use an electronic calendar. But that will help you because follow-up is doing what you said you would do. You want to be the person that does what you say you're going to do and people will respect that. If you say you're going to follow up at a specific time or in a specific way, either do it or reschedule well ahead of the time that you said you were going to do it. You know, Eric talks about when he first started, he would conclude every exposure with, what do you think? Well, no one told him that that was one of the worst things you could do. And of course, he had terrible results until finally his mentor told him that the only reason to have an exposure is to set up the next exposure. Well, what does that really mean? You know, most of the time we think that the exposure is going to get that person signed up right away. Eric's mentor indicated that if you finish each exposure by setting up the next one, that your prospect will eventually become educated on the opportunity and make an informed decision. Kind of like with Inform. Most people don't hear about Inform and like, oh, sign me up. Some might, but a lot of people need to hear you. They need to see you as a coach. It's like, hmm, she talks about this inform thing. And I love what Dale said. We have to be a product of the product too. We have to go through what our clients go through as well to really be great coaches. And so people are looking at us. They're listening to what we say. And that's setting up those exposures. They're not going to join your inform group the first time you talk about it. But they might because you're setting up one exposure after another. So his goal changed from getting the next, the prospect on the first exposure to just keeping the process alive by setting up the next follow-up exposure and then the next and then the next until they make a decision. Eric says when he made that small improvement, his results improved dramatically. So let's take this concept and follow it up from when you invited your prospect from skill number three that we talked about last month. You invited them to view your product or opportunity. When you made that call, you're going to ask them if they reviewed the material. Some will say, no, I didn't. And some will say, yes, I did. So let's talk about how you set up the next exposure in both cases. So if they say they didn't review the material, it's important to not show your displeasure at their lack of follow through. Because if you jump on them for not reviewing the material, that's not really going to build a positive relationship. Really, the best way to respond is say, that's okay. I understand sometimes life gets busy. When do you think you could do it like for sure, for sure? And I know that sounds kind of funny, but he says, when you do it like that, people will do that. And basically, you're setting up next time for your follow-up and you're gonna walk through those same commitment steps that you had in step two. Just remember, 
that if they haven't reviewed the material, just to repeat the process until they do. You're setting the appointment and you're being the professional by following up like you said you would. Now, if they did review the material, don't ask, what you think? Again, Eric says that's not the way to do it. You, this just invites the critical part of someone's mindset to come up with objections from the start. So Eric suggests that the best way to respond is, what did you like best? This question will take you on a very positive direction and it'll give you clues as to their level of interest. If they say the product, then your next exposure would be product related. If they say financial freedom, then your next exposure will be opportunity related. Another question to ask is on a scale of one to 10, with one being not interested and 10 being you're ready to start right away, where are you right now? Now this question, anything over one is good. That says they have some interest. So no matter what they answer, you're gonna ask them how you can help them get to a higher number. If their answer was very positive, go directly to closing, which we'll cover next month in skill number five. If it isn't an obvious green light, just schedule the next exposure. Now, they may want to try the product, so you wanna help them do that and then set up a follow-up date. They might wanna learn more about the compensation plan. You'll do that and set up the next follow-up date. They may want to talk about with their spouse, so you can send them home with some materials and set up the next follow-up date. Do you see a pattern here? Whenever you finish with one exposure, you have to set up the next one. Otherwise, if you don't set up something to follow up, it's that series of, I'll let you know, I'll get back with you, I need to think about it, and then, all of a sudden, they're gone. So Eric says he implemented this skill, everything changed for the better. You're now being a professional, you're in control. The prospect will have more respect for you for the opportunity. It happens from one change of mindset. So concept three, you know, when people don't understand that the only reason for an exposure is to set up the next one, sometimes they put too much pressure on themselves or on their prospect. They think, okay, I've got, I got one shot at this. So many relationships have been damaged when someone doesn't join right away. And you know, you'll hear people follow the mantra of, some will, some won't, move on. And unfortunately, they leave their friends and family in the dust. But a professional understands that it takes an average of four to six exposures for the average person to join, whether that's to join your inform group or to consider being a coach themselves. Your goal is to educate and help people understand, and you can't do that in one exposure. Through the process of multiple exposures, it'll eventually sink in, and you're building a relationship along the way. You're building trust, and people always enjoy working with someone that they have a relationship with. Again, four to six is just the average. For every one person who after one exposure is all in, there's another who's gonna need 10 exposures. And some of the best people in network marketing were prospected for years before they finally made a decision to take a part in the opportunity. Keep your urgency, but have patience. In my own personal story, I was told about Nature Sunshine eight years ago. And I had heard about the project products and I, and I liked some of them. And I was a consumer, but I never saw myself doing a nature sunshine business until I saw Inform. And then it clicked for me because that was a way I could have a nature sunshine business because I probably wasn't going to become a natural health practitioner. I probably wasn't going to end my career and open up a retail store, but nature sunshine's Inform program was definitely a way that I could have a business with nature sunshine. And I hope that you all are working that too. But again, that was eight years ago. And then it was another four years before I really started doing the business. So don't push thinking if they don't get in the first time, forget it. It does take time. Times how much? Oh yeah. So posers prospect someone once and move on. 
amateurs prospect someone through several exposures over time, but the professional condenses these exposures into the shortest time possible. You know, people are busy. They're constantly distracted by life. And you, when you're approaching them to take a look at something new, it's important to keep their interest. So the best way to do that is to stack the exposures together as close as possible. So what does that look like? Well, Eric gave the example of have them check out a video. Then maybe they join in on a conference call or they participate in a three-way call with you and maybe uh, one of your successful inform clients, someone else who's a coach underneath you. And then they come to a live meeting, whether that's one of your inform meetings. You know, we have the summer series coming up, um, bringing someone to that. Sometimes even bringing someone to something big like convention. I know for me, my first convention, I wasn't even in the business yet. And it inspired me like nothing else. If you can do, Eric says, if you can do all this within a week, which may not always be possible, but if you do several of these close together, it provides them with an opportunity to really think about how this opportunity could change their lives, whether it's to be an informed client or to be a coach or some other way to be involved with Nature Sunshine. A question to post to you, do you have enough resources and or local events to provide these condensed exposures? I know a lot of groups locally, you've got managers who have weekly or monthly meetings. Does your group in your area have something on a regular basis? Or is there something you can tie into? You know, do you conduct weekly conference calls or meetings or monthly live events or other regular touch points? You know, it'd be difficult to implement this concept if you don't have something regularly scheduled to plug someone into. Of course, after all of this, every step in the recruitment process, you will come across questions and objections, and it's natural but how you respond to those is extremely important. If you act offensive, you will plant seeds of doubt in their mind. But if you act offensively, you'll chase them away. Remember, the goal is to educate and understand and building those. It's not to win an argument. And when someone brings up a negative question or if they offer you an objective, an objection, all they're really doing is helping you identify they're blind spots. You know, Eric indicated that he found objections fall into one of two categories. First, it's the prospect's limited belief in their own abilities, in their self. They're not sure if they can be successful. Or it's a limited belief in network marketing. They're not sure if network marketing will help them achieve their life goals. For both categories, one of the best concepts is empathy how you relate to those people and the best ways to let them know that they're just like you were. You had the same doubts, the same questions, the same fears, and you overcame them. And believe it or not, your story and the stories of others will help do more for you in overcoming objections than anything else. There's an old tactic that you may have heard of called feel, felt, and found. It works with the concept of empathy, and when a prospect offers the objection, you respond with, I know how you feel. I felt the same way, but here's what I found. And then tell your story, which may be similar to the objection, or your, someone else's story. Maybe you don't have a story that matches theirs, but you know of someone who does. Modify it based on your own story and your prospect. Now here's how I used this when I was an inform coach. I had several clients balk at the need for the inform products, thinking that all they needed was diet and exercise. My response was, I know how you feel. I felt that I should be able to lose some of my excess weight by just watching what I ate and exercised. But when I tried that on my own, I wasn't very successful. But when I committed to the whole inform program, the eating plan and the exercise, but also the group meetings and all of that camaraderie and support that comes from that. Getting on those bio tracker and taking my measurements to see exactly where I was. Plus, using the Inform products, I found that I finally achieved the success that I was looking for. I didn't just shed pounds, but I also alleviated my foggy brain, my anky joints, 
and my restless nights. I improved my blood numbers and I increased my energy level. And it's not just a short-term fix. I made inform my lifestyle and five years later, I'm still improving. Now that got me quite a few people in my inform classes. So when someone has a limited belief in themselves, here are some common objections that you might hear. I don't have the money. I don't have the time. I'm not a salesperson. I don't know anyone. Or I'm too young. I'm too old. I don't have experience. Rather than tell them they're wrong and point out where they spend their money or their time, the better approach is to relate to that person and tell them your story. So Eric tells a story, it's on page 87 in his book. Um, he responds with, you know, I had that exact same challenge. He says he didn't have enough money to pay the bills, let alone start a new business. But when I thought about it, I realized that if I didn't have enough money to pay my bills now, how was I gonna change that for the future? I was tired of being behind. I was tired of always scrambling and I wanted more out of life. So you know what I did? I found a way and it was the best decision I ever made. Let me ask you something. If you really felt this was a chance for you to take control of your financial future, do you think you could find a way to make it happen? And Eric says nine times out of 10 that they would find a way. Helps you bond with others when you've been in the same boat with the same hopes and dreams. So think about your own story and select the parts that you feel will connect with others. Now, if someone has a limited belief in network marketing, you may hear questions like, is this another MLM? Is it a pyramid scheme? You know, I'm not really interested in an MLM. I don't wanna bother my friends. Oh, well, how much are you making? You know, the first few questions strike fear in the heart of every person who does direct sales. Don't react with, and you might have heard this, pyramid scheme, you mean like every corporation in the world, like the government? You mean like that? Obviously, you're not gonna build any relationships with that kind of reaction. More than likely, they or someone they know has had a negative experience with direct sales. A better reaction is to ask them about their experience. Have them tell you your story. It opens them up. It lowers their defenses. It allows you to ask questions about their experience. And Dale provides us a really good example um, or Eric, I'm thinking about Dale, <laughs> because Dale's so good at this too. Um, but he's got an example on page 90 where he says, um, you know, a lot of people are like, an MLM, you should reply with, oh, do you have a story? Did you try something at some point? What happened? And that's like, yeah, I joined a company a few years ago. I bought some products and I lost my money. Eric responded with, what do you think was the reason you didn't have success? And they'll say, well, my friend talked me into it. I didn't have a lot of time and I thought more people would join right away and they didn't. So I guess I just lost interest. To which Eric replied, do you think you gave it a fair shot? Well, no, not really. So Eric would say, do you think network marketing was the problem? Or do you think that maybe your timing wasn't right? A lot of times they'll respond with probably the timing. So in that dynamic, you see that you, you know, you're just asking what their experience was. And you know, as an informed coach, a lot of the people in your classes have probably had negative experience with other dieting plans or other programs to be a part of. And so they're skeptical about either joining you in your, as letting you coach them through the informed program or they may be skeptical about becoming a coach for themselves and building a business. Again, that's an opportunity to just say, tell me about your experience. Because more than likely they had a negative experience and this is your opportunity to help them overcome that. As far as that question of, oh, I don't wanna bother my friends, um, a few probing questions can help clarify their concern. Most just don't wanna be a pushy salesperson and hopefully none of you all are because that's not really how we help somebody, is by being pushy. We help by finding out what their concern is and providing them a solution. Now, then there's the how much money you're making question. 
Um, no need to get specific here. Regardless of how much money you're making, you're really excited about your future with Nature Sunshine, or you're really excited about the opportunity that you can provide them through Inform, because you know things weren't going to change if you didn't do something to change them. Again, you can share your own success story, and if you really don't have one yet, share someone else's. Um, if you know someone who's making really good money, suggest setting up a conference call or a meeting to have them share their story. Most important is that you practice this. You're not going to get really comfortable with, you know, sometimes people's questions, we hear them over and over and they get really defensive. It takes practice for us to respond in that more loving, empathetic, relationship building way. So practice with your family, friends, other people who are part of your team to help each other to be able to respond in a really positive way to give people really what they need. Is Inform going to be the program for everybody? No. Is direct sales for everybody? No. But you also don't want to ruin relationships and get all defensive with people if they're not interested. So practice how you work with them on that. A few things to remember from what we've talked about is follow-up is doing what you said you would do. So I always want to follow up because the only reason why to have any exposure is to set up the next exposure. It takes an average of four to six exposures for the average person to join. And you want to condense those exposures for better results. And if you don't already have something ongoing regularly with your local team, maybe it'd be a great opportunity to set up something, whether it's a monthly call or meeting, maybe it's something monthly, but something that always, you know, you keep those little informed brochures in on your person. Whether you got them in your purse, you got them in your bag, you've got some extra in your car. Something that you can always hand out to person. Um, if you do your program, your informed program, on a weekly basis, invite new people. Hey, why don't you come? We've got a group on Tuesday night. Here's where it meets. You can come as a guest just to learn more about it different ways that you're condensing those exposures to people. And then, of course, you overcome objections with the feel, felt, found, empathetic approach. If you've got some questions about what we just covered, go ahead and put them in the chat box and we'll make sure that we try to answer those. But that's a lot of what Dale even talked about with follow-up. When you've got clients in your inform group and maybe they don't come that week, follow up with them. A quick phone call, a quick text. Hey, how you doing? Was it just not a good night for you? Hey, you want me to bring the bio tracker by and let's see how you did last week? Ways that you can continue to keep in touch with them. That follow up with your clients so that they're engaged in the inform program, but then follow up also with people who may be interested in inform or nature sunshine as a way to obtain their financial freedom too. Brian, have we got any questions in the chat? Let's see, I just opened it up. I didn't see any there. Let me see if I got anything here. I don't see anything in our chat, but as usual, if you've got any questions about um, this with the GoPro, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I am Rebecca with two C's, R-E-B-E-C-C-A, the letter T for Trevino at N-A-T-R.com. And I'd be happy to answer any of your questions um, with that. Um, I was a successful informed coach out in the field and I loved what I did. Uh, but when I had the opportunity to come onto the Nature Sunshine staff uh, to bring my training and development career uh, background for a couple of decades and bring that um, in with my uh, experience as being building a business with nature sunshine I couldn't pass it up so uh, it's really great uh, so next month we're going to keep going on with the GoPro skills and we will talk about helping prospects and to become either customers or distributors so that's what we'll cover next week as well um, hey if you got some people on your team who weren't able to make it to today's webinar it is recorded and those are always posted in the inform section of the Nature Sunshine website. So if somebody missed it, or if you want to take part of this and share it with your team,
because the GoPro skills work whether you're an inform coach, uh, you have a retail store, uh, you were a natural health practitioner, or any other way that you build your nature sunshine business. Wow, thank you, Rebecca, so much for that information. We really appreciate uh, your time and your energy put towards that presentation and the insights that you brought to us as a group. And, um, you know, you mentioned the different resources. I wanted to also just throw in a reminder to people that we have a great blog and we have a great tool, um, app tool that makes sharing and passing along information very easy as well. So just throw that little plug in there. Thank you again, Rebecca. Appreciate you doing that for us. Um, what I'd like to do now is, as Rebecca said, we've, we've kind of answered or don't have any questions uh, specific to the GoPro stuff, but there was one question, Dell, if you wouldn't mind, um, uh, regarding the roll-on, uh, the essential oil roll-on for the thyroid, um, do you have a recommendation as far as like how many drops in carrier oil you you would use for that roll-on? Of yeah. In a in a roll on, you know, you can use up to, let's say, you know, 23 or four drops and then your carrier oil. So um, I would say probably you could almost make it even. Uh, we've used, you know, like six, six and six, which would give you 18. That would be six frankincense, six myrrh and six lemongrass. And then up to the shoulder with the carrier oil, that works really well. Perfect. Ah, oh, great. And um, thank you again for that insight there, just reminding us that there's lots of different ways we can accelerate our um, participant success. And one of the ways that we can accelerate our business success, and as Rebecca mentioned too, is, as well as um, she mentioned the bio tracker, bringing the bio tracker by somebody's home and as part of the follow ups. But we have a program, as you inform coaches probably should be well aware of, which is our health to your home uh, and how we can implement that. It first started out for the coaches as a promotion back in December. It's now become a program. But at, you, as inform coaches, have the best opportunity because you are running groups. And just like um, Dell and other successful leaders are doing, they're having weekly meetings with a group of individuals and, and they're gathering it at their home or some location. And that's what we'd encourage you to do is to implement the Health to Your Home program. If, if you've reached a plateau or if you're looking for something new to talk about, um, look towards those glandular products even, having a discussion on those. Um, the key is gathering in a host house somewhere different than your own as well, inviting somebody else to be the host of that event. Bring, of course, your bio tracker, have samplings, and as Dale mentioned, make it fun. And then, of course, you can give um, them information, education, as Rebecca suggested, make sure that we're educating people and setting up the opportunity. This is one of the best ways to put in practice that second exposure, as they said, uh, where you're setting up an opportunity to have another exposure with these hosts. So um, the Health Your Home Host incentives, we want to review with you real quickly if you're not aware of them. When you have seven or more new people, these are new individuals that are not members of Nature Sunshine already, attending a gathering, your host will earn a free um, Prosper essential oil blend. And of course, that's a $34 value. So the, the way this works is you encourage somebody to be a host, you give them this host incentive, you work with them on, on properly inviting people, you practice that skill set. Um, you put together a topic, and you go ahead and have that event, and of course your host will also earn free product based on the orders that are placed at that event. And as we educate people, we know that people are willing to buy and, and learn about Nature Sunshine more. And you can kind of see the table there. I won't take up too much time reviewing it, but anywhere from $50 in free product to up to $200 in free product is what your host of the event may earn and you as the presenter of course you as the presenter the support leader um, you may earn 25 I inspire points for each event submitted here to home office and you as well have an incentive to um, reach sales objectives for each event and you can see that incentive is in the form of I inspire points anywhere from 10 to 50 I inspire points based on the sales of that event so the host has an incentive, you have an incentive as a presenter, and in July, we as a company have an incentive for you to start a group. Now, 
seven is the goal, or, or beyond seven is the goal, of course. You want to have as many people as you can there. But with five people, you'll receive a $50 product credit. So if you start a group in July and you have five or more people, you'll receive $50 in product credit. Or an additional product credit, of course, based on your group sales. Um, and you can see that in addition to what we've already talked about, the help the home incentives, if you start a group here in Inform in July, you can see you can earn $50 in product credit if you have five or more attendees. And of course, um, reach 500 in QB sales of weight loss products in your group, you'll receive $100 product credit. And that just continues to build. So 50, then 100, then up to $250 when you have 1,000 QV and weight loss cells or more. So we just wanted to review that, remind you that there's an incentive going on in July. Summer is a great opportunity to get together, have a gathering, make it fun, and, and, and start your informed group um, today. So with that, I'd like to thank you everybody for joining us, taking the time to be with us. We've kind of answered our questions. Our next webinar, as um, Rebecca said, we'll have a specific topic in our GoPro book, but it is scheduled for Tuesday, August 7th. So write that on your calendar, Tuesday, August 7th, and make sure you invite your group members and other coaches within your organization as well. So to Dell and Rebecca, thank you very much. To each of you, thank you for being on the call today. Have a wonderful day and a great remainder of your week. Thank you for being a part of Nature Sunshine. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.